Hi everyone, I'm Athena Cantley and I work for Grey Matters Technology. I'm here today to talk to you about Senas Productions, the new upcoming feature film, Awake, and how the writer-director Andrew, Andrew Palmer brought me to life with XN's Gloves by Nanis, XN's Oh in the suit, the standard deviation, head mounted camera, an iPhone 12, iClone 8, and Facewear Studio with a meta human body and all inside of the Unreal Engine. All right, everyone. So, first thing we're going to do is go to your Epic Games account. You know, there's a lot of Unreal Engine. You're going to have to sign into your account and then go to the library and click plus for the engine versions. If you don't have one, just scroll through and select one. Once you have the proper engine version to work in, you're just going to make sure it has all the latest updates. So just go to options and make sure you have the starter content and templates and feature packs. In order to open MetaHuman Creator, you can go to the Unreal Engine website, select MetaHuman, then scroll down and either request early access or if you have it, then just click launch the app. It's online, so it's limited the number of hours that you can use it for. There are preset metahumans you can use, or you can create your own. If you want to do that, then just select one that looks the most like a character you'd like to work with. And then you can use the button mode to select between three other metahumans that might have similar looks to what you're trying to achieve. And then you can toggle between the three different characters to adjust aspects of the face to make them look more like each character. You can also change the skin texture, the number of freckles, the eye color, body proportions, and clothing. And that's really cool because it means you can duplicate your character and have different looks for them for different scenes in your movie. Once you're satisfied with your magic humans, then you can go to Quixel Bridge inside Unreal Engine. You'll see the regular magic humans that are available by default. And you'll have to sign in in order to add any of them. Once you've signed in, you'll also see your own MetaHuman creations come up. And you'll just have to download it by pressing the green button. You may also notice the yellow icon if you need to update the MetaHuman because there's changes that have been made. Or it might be a warning that some of these MetaHumans have a certain LOD setting. So once you've got your MetaHuman selected, then press add and it'll add it to the project file. You'll have this warning pop up because of the new DNA feature. So just make sure to select your MetaHuman's name in the drop down menu. And then you can go to the MetaHuman folder, find your character, blueprint, and drop it into the level. Now I've already added this other MetaHuman in order to show you what the LOD does. Now as you scroll back and forth, you'll notice that the hair disappears and also the face becomes quite blocky. And that's due to the level of detail. But if you're making cinematics for a feature film and you need to see them at the top level of detail no matter how far away they are, then open up the blueprints. You'll see some compiler warnings here. In order to fix them, just click on it. Just draw a line out from the other node and type in get skeletal mesh assets. And then connect that node to the other one and delete the old one. And do the same thing for any of these warnings. Now, let's go over to the very left side of the screen, scroll down to where it says LOD, click on that, at the right side of the screen, and you'll look for the minimum LOD, which currently is set to negative one. Just change that to zero, and hit compile. Now, when we go back to our level, you'll notice that no matter how far away we get from MetaHuman, it looks perfect. <laughs> So you'll need a few plugins to do the facial performance. You'll need Facewear Live Link, Live Link, and Take Recorder. And Real Engine will ask you to restart afterwards, so just click that. And once it's restarting, we're going to want to create a new basic level to do the take recording in. Now, Facewear has a few different licenses. For this program, we're using Facewear Studio. There's a motion logic blueprint that you'll need in order to do live link from Facebook Studio into Unreal Engine. So download that, drop it into the content folder for your project file. Now just create a duplicate MetaHuman to work with because we're going to change the blueprint. Go inside your blueprint and go to the face. So just select the Anim class, drop down, and look for the blueprints for the motion logic facewear. Select that. 
And now when you click on the blueprints, you'll notice that it's compiled at live. Now you can drop that and that if you min into the level. And then you're gonna want to create a new sequence. Just add a track once you have your MetaHuman selected and you'll see it there. You can add the MetaHuman to the file. Delete the controller rigs because we don't need them. And then you're gonna wanna open up Take Recorder and Live Link. Once you have Take Recorder open, select your MetaHuman and click Add Source. Find the MetaHuman and add it. You can deselect the body and just select the face because that's all we're gonna record with. Now you can open up Facewear. And then just go to Live Link and make sure that you add Facewear as the Live Link. Now you can open up Facewear Studio, add your video file. So just pause your video file and then scroll through to find a usual pose with the mouth closed and the eyes looking straight forward. Then you can calibrate. Once it's calibrated, you can click the streaming tab and make sure that you're streaming to Unreal Engine. Now we want to record at 60 frames per second. So just add the display for the FPS to make sure that you're over that. If you're running dangerously low, then you can do a couple of things. You can go into unlend mode, even also select the many human and delete the hair groom. When you're ready to record, then just make sure that your video file is set to the beginning in Facebook Studio. Go back to Unreal Engine and click record in Take Recorder then press play in Facewear Studio. After the video file has finished playing out, you can stop it, stop recording, and you'll notice that a new folder appears in your content folder called Cinematics. So open up the Cinematics folder and you'll see the animations that you've recorded for the day. You can open up each folder and check the animation to make sure that it recorded properly. Once that's done, you can go back to your level and we want to want to create a new sequence. Add your metahuman into the sequence and you'll notice all the control rigs. If you want to animate the old fashioned way, then you can do that. But we're also going to show you how to clean up the animation afterwards in a non-destructive additive way. So once you've deleted the control rigs, click on face and you want to go to animation and add the animation file that you just created. You'll see it immediately retargets to the night of human's face. Next thing you're going to want to do is create a new folder in the content folder called audio and then take the audio track from your video file that you used and drop it in. Go back to your sequence and add an audio track and then have the audio file that you just imported to Unreal Engine. Now you'll notice that there's a straight line anytime they slate and clap. So you're just going to want to line that up with your big length that you did when you slayed it. Once that's done, you can group those two files and then they're easy to move. So now we're going to go back to the content browser and add a future or content pack. And you're going to want to add a third person content. After you do that, you can press cancel and you'll notice two new folders, one of which says characters. And that's the one that we're going to use to retarget. Inside, you can see the UE4 Manny, and that's what we're going to retarget our FBX data to. Inside the folder, there's also an IK retargeter that retargets your UE4 Manny to your UE5 Manny. And then you'll also notice the UE5 Manny, which has the exact same bone structure as a MetaHuman. So it'll be really easy to retarget your animation straight to the MetaHuman. Open up your MetaHuman and then click on the Skeletal Mesh Asset and then click on the Skeleton. You'll see they all have a common metahuman skeleton, which is great because when we retarget the animation, we can use it for any of our metahumans. Click on the gear icon and make sure that everything other than pelvis and root is set to skeleton. The pelvis and root are set to animation. You can select all the other bones and then right click and set recursively to skeleton. Now we want to open up the window, then asset details, click plus, and then you want to Look for the SK Mannequin. Now Unreal Engine knows that your MetaHuman skeleton is compatible with the SK Manny. Now let's do the same thing with the SK Manny. Okay, select it, then click the gear icon. Make sure you recursively set all the bonds to skeleton, except for pelvis and root, which should be animation. And then click the window, asset details, and look for the MetaHuman base skeleton.
Great. Next thing we're going to do is go back to Content Browser and create a new folder called MoCap. That's where we're going to store all of our animation. And I like to create a subfolder with a character name and any specific takes. So once you've done that, you can drag and drop the FBX file from iClone that you've exported earlier into the folder. So you're going to want to make sure you have skeletal mesh selected, import mesh selected, use T0 as reference pose. You're going to want the custom sample rate to be 60. And you're going to also want to import animation. After that, you can click import. Now you can click on the animation file to double check that it imported properly. Look at that, it did, perfect. Now you're gonna click on the skeleton and do the same thing. Click on the gear icon, show retargeting options, select everything other than pelvis and root, right click, recursively set to skeleton. Click window, asset details, add, and now we're going to look for the UE4 Manny. Once that's selected, then just close it and save, and you can save all. Now we're gonna go to the UE4 Manny, do the same thing. Set pelvis and root to animation, everything else to skeleton, and then click window and make sure that this is connected to our animation file. Once that's finished, we can go back to the content browser and open up the IK rig. Now you'll notice that the source of the IK rig is our UE4 Manny. The target is the UE5 Manny. And you'll see the animation in the bottom window. Select the animation and you can see it retargeting, which is great. You can also adjust the offset in order to see how it compares from source to target. Now, it may not retarget exactly perfectly, so there's a few things you can do to adjust it. Just click on either the left arm or the right arm or left leg or right leg, and then up here you'll see it says blend to source. You can adjust this on a scale from one to zero, and it'll change how it blends from the source to the target and click chain mapping so you can adjust that. Once you're satisfied, click on the asset browser and select your animation and then click export. So you should export it to the same folder that you have the animation in. Once that's done, you can go back to sequencer, click on the body, add animation and find your animation file. Perfect. Now what we're going to want to do is look for the clap for our slate and line that up with our audio track and face track. Once everything is synced up, then you can just adjust the metahuman in the scene to make sure that it's in the correct position you want. After that, you're ready to add cameras and light the scene. Very exciting. Well, we hope you found this tutorial informative and enjoyable. If you did, please leave a like and a comment below. And make sure to subscribe so you can see more videos in this series on how to take your idea, turn it into a script, and use motion capture technology to make it blockbuster quality feature film for an independent budget. Bye! Thanks again!